I'm here at UDS um, in Brussels, Belgium, and I'm with Stuart Langridge. He's the technical architect for the Ubuntu One um, application. Or how do you describe that, Stuart? Project. I project. call it actually. Yeah, I'm technical architect for the Ubuntu One project or for uh, Ubuntu Online Services. I know Ubuntu One, especially with the Ubuntu One Music Store and. This, this last release was like the hot ticket item. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what that offers that, that Ubuntu didn't offer before? Well, we did quite a lot of stuff during the Lucid cycle and uh, 10.04. And one of the, as you say, one of the big things was the music store, um, which we really wanted to do because we've had loads and loads and loads of people say that it was a big hole in the free desktop. And so we wanted to help out, provide something there. And it, it took us a while to get it built and um, we had to um, organise a deal with a partner because obviously we don't want to be doing deals with music labels and so on. But what it actually gives people is a chance to actually buy real music that they've heard of and that their friends are listening to and that their parents are listening to and their colleagues are listening to. They can just go home, buy it on their Ubuntu desktop. And one of the, the things that we did that everyone else isn't doing is it's all integrated with your Ubuntu One cloud storage. So when you buy a song, it's automat it automatically goes to Ubuntu One first and then down to the computer you're on. But that means it also goes to all the other computers that you're on as well. So if you're sitting here, um, conference on, you know, buying something on your netbook, when you get home, it'll already be there for you. It's all already synced. So much the same as all the other stuff in Ubuntu One, it's, it's everywhere. It's, um, your digital life is what we're trying to help with. And I find that amazing, though I'm not... Now, my kids love the Ubuntu One, um, uh, the music store part of Ubuntu One. I, I'm, I, that's not my favorite part of uh, Ubuntu One. My favorite part happens to be the, the syncing of the Tomboy notes because I'm bad about a note on this machine, a note on that machine, depending on where I'm at. Can you tell people how the, the note, the, the syncing of the notes work? Because I think that's also an application that is very beneficial to users um, regardless of where they're at and, and what they're using it for. So. Yes. Um, tomboy divides people into two camps. Some people don't keep notes that way. They don't remember things. Uh, half, the, half the people in the world seem to live their entire life out of Tomboy. So it's something we wanted to get working really well. And the, the Upstream Tomboy project were very keen on it. So they, they sat down and started to work out how they would do note synchronization to make sure that your notes were in every installation of Tomboy you've got, on your main computer, on, on your netbook, everything like that. And they came to us and we came to them and said, well, we're thinking about making this happen in Ubuntu One as well can we help? So um, we all got together and worked out how it should work technically, but while roughing out specifications and so on. And Ubuntu One actually was the first <laughs> deployed version of this, the first version that, anyone, that people could actually start working with. So we hit a few bugs early on, <laughs> but um, we got those resolved. And we're now in a position where you can have Tomboy Notes going everywhere. There are people working on things like Android clients and so on. So you can, uh, there's a client called Tomdroid, yeah, which works on an Android phone. It's, th it, it's still quite new, but that's great because you can just tell that, talk to Ubuntu One, and it gets all your notes. So you've got them on your phone, wherever you are, as well as having them on your desktop, on your laptop, on your netbook, everywhere. And of course, you can get all this stuff through the web as well. So if you're away from your computer, you can still see all of your notes, change all of your notes there, and then they'll be on your computers when you get back. Early on, when I first started kind of playing with Ubuntu One, it didn't quite work for me, and I think it's probably a user issue at that point. But now, especially with Lucid, I find it's just working, it, and it's working smoothly for me. The other thing that I noticed, um, especially in preparation for UDS, was publishing files to the web. Like I didn't, no longer do I have to put them on my personal server and put them out there. It's now I can sync them to Ubuntu One, and Ubuntu One gives me a public link or a public URL that I can then send people to. That feature um, has a lot of benefit for me, especially with uh, slideshows and stuff like that. What are other people using that feature for? We've seen people really start to pick up on the public file stuff. That was a new feature for 1004. And part of what we wanted to do was just make give you an easy way of pushing files out. So if you want to just send a file to your friends and then tweet the link or something like that. We made it very easy to just say, publish this file, give me the link, and then you go into Gwibber and say, push, there it is. You know, you uh, tweet the link of it and then everyone can see that link really quickly. So it's kind of like uh, Bitly or TidyURL or something like that, but it works on the files you've actually got. So you've got one click 
publish it out and get the details of where it is. We've seen a lot of people are using it for screenshots, actually. Um, we've People will take us. Uh, people will say, oh, "I want to explain something to you," and they'll just take a quick screenshot, publish it through Ubuntu One. One of the things I'd like to do for Maverick is start talking to application developers about making that easier. So there's a thing called Shutter, which is for taking screenshots. You've got the basic screenshot thing built into Ubuntu, and then there's Shutter, which lets you do a lot more. And I use that to take screenshots to show to people. And I'd really, really love just a publish to Ubuntu One button directly in there. So I could just say, you know, one key to uh, grab a screen, one key to publish it to Ubuntu One, done. And enabling that kind of thing is one of my big goals for the Maverick cycle for 10.10 .10 in October. So... 10.10.10? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> so, so enabling application developers like the Shutter project to really easily add Ubuntu One support to their applications. I've talked to a number of app developers here at UBS about exactly how they do that, what they need from us to make that possible. And broadly what they need is not so much the technical detail, which is already there, but just a conversation with us to know what's going on. So publicity about the fact that these features are not just available to Ubuntu One themselves, but that we have APIs and developer documentation that makes it easy for application developers to integrate Ubuntu One support into their apps. That is great. And I am so glad that, that Ubuntu that Ubuntu One um, has this feature implemented in it, this application project. Um, any number of names that you'd like to call it kind of fits neatly into all of those things. How can, I know this cycle, uh, Maverick, is really focused on those opportunistic developers in the community. How can those developers help you all w with these goals that you have for 10.10? Um, .10? One of the discussions that we've had during UDS has been about the creation of a manual for opportunistic developers explaining different aspects of the Ubuntu platform and some of that is about publicizing the fact that those aspects exist and some of it is about helping opportunistic app developers actually get to grips with them and one of the big components of the Ubuntu platform is desktop couch which is a general database system that anyone can use and that's automatically synchronized to Ubuntu One so if you have an application which stores its data in desktop couch then that application's data is available on all of your machines all the time. You don't have to set it up everywhere. Everything remembers what you've done. So you can move seamlessly from one machine to the next machine and still be fine. And I'd very much like to get that kind of thing out. So as I say, we're talking about a, a manual to describe to people how this works. We're starting to see uh, a lot of uptake of desktop couching and things like the Quickly project being done by Rick Spencer and uh, Didier, which is all about helping people really easily develop an application for the Ubuntu platform. And desktop couch support is baked into that. If you decide that your application should have preferences and so on that it needs to save, it will do it in desktop couch for you automatically. And that's another big component that we'd really like to see people using. So as they start to pick up on that, we'll happily help. What, what, as I say, one of the things that I want to do during this cycle is build up the documentation and the work that we've got. Great. Well, sir, thank you so much for stopping by and talking to us today and letting people know a little bit more about Ubuntu One. How can people find you on the internet um, to say, hey, I'm here, I want to help? Go to one.ubuntu.com. Uh, that's the actual service itself. You can sign up, start working with it, um, file bugs if there are any bugs. I'm sure there are no bugs, but occasionally there might be one or two. Um, we all hang out in the Hash Ubuntu One channel on uh, the Freenode IRC network. So if you want help, support, you want to talk to us, if you've got things in spe specifically that you'd like to do to help develop Ubuntu One, come talk to me or any other team and we'll help you out. Thank you so much and I uh, look forward to seeing what uh, the project brings in, in uh, the Maverick cycle in 10.10.10. .10 .10. Thank you. Thank you for having me.